Hello and welcome to another Google Classroom video tutorial. In this episode, we're going to have a look at how to keep your Google Classroom nice and organized. There are three basic strategies that we can use to ensure that our Google Classroom doesn't get messy. And they are organizing by topics, reusing posts, and archiving and deleting classrooms that we don't no longer need. Why don't we look at each of these strategies one at a time? And we are going to start with topics. Well, topics are probably the easiest way to make sure that you, the content that you post on the Google Classroom uh, doesn't get out of hand and it's easily accessible by you and your students. To use topics to organize your Google Classroom, go to Classwork, click Create, and click on the topic. Before you create any topics, uh, think about how you would like to compartmentalize everything that you've posted on your Google Classroom. You might have a bunch of assignments, a bunch of questions, a bunch of materials and so forth. Think about what are the topics that all your posts can fall into. Teachers normally compartmentalize their content by either units or uh, type of post. So let me demonstrate first how can we categorize our post by units. So to do that, we're going to create three units that I'm teaching this semester. We're gonna create unit one, create another unit, unit two, and unit three. You might have noticed that once I've created those units, they appear on the left of my screen as a table of content because I have some posts uh, that have been generated before, I can now try and sort them out. So I know that assignment one belongs to unit one. So what I will do, I will simply take it and drag it to unit one. Immediately, assignment one will disappear from my posts here up top and will show up under unit one. I will do the same for other posts. My first quiz assignment belongs to unit three. My question about creativity belongs to unit two. My essay prompts belong to unit three and that my assignment two belongs to unit two. I think we're starting to see how our Google Classroom can look much more organized when we start using topics. There are a couple of things you can do when it comes to editing the topics. First thing uh, is renaming. Uh, once you've set up a name, you can rename it later on. You can move them up and down or dragging uh, them from the all topics view. And one important thing to remember why deleting the topic is that when you delete a topic, your post that belong to this topic won't be deleted. What I've done right now, I've deleted unit three, which had essay prompts and my first quiz assignment, but there they've just been moved up to an unassigned topic. So this is one way to organize the, all your content, organizing by units. What you can also do is organize all your content according to the type of the post. Google Classroom uh, allows you to create four different types, assignment, quiz assignment, questions and materials, and this could be your topics. So why don't we go ahead and try and organize in this way. Our first topic is going to be assignment. Our second topic is going to be quiz assignment. Our third topic is going to be question and finally our fourth topic is going to be material. The assignment will go under the assignment, material will go under the material and so forth. There's one more thing I need to point out is that uh, you can assign your posts to topics while you're creating them. To do that while you're creating let's say a question Right here, you can select to which topic this particular post will be assigned to. This is uh, a question, a post, so this will be assigned to question. Once I post this question, it will automatically go under the question topic. This is just two ways to categorize your posts. You can come up with your own method, but this is what I uh, personally do, either organizing by units or type of assignments. Another thing you can do to help you keep your Google Classroom organized is to reuse posts. Uh, I think it's easier to demonstrate how it's done. So let's say this is my second Google Classroom that doesn't have anything in classwork. So instead of creating an assignment from scratch, what I can do is I can reuse posts generated in another Google Classroom. Let me demonstrate what I mean. If I go to create and click reuse posts, reuse posts will first ask me, okay, which class would I would like to reuse a post from. This is the second Google Classroom and I would like to reuse posts from my first Google Classroom. So this will take me to my first Google Classroom and I can select a post that I would like to reuse in my second Google Classroom. So in my case, I would like to reuse assignment one. 
make sure when you reuse posts, you create new copies for all as attachments so that attachments are not shared between two groups of students. When I click reuse, now assignment one that was in originally generated in my first Google Classroom appeared in my second Google Classroom. So this is a really nice way to keep it organized. Instead of creating new posts over and over again, reuse post function enables you to recycle posts that have been generated before for the current classrooms. Our final strategy to help you keep your Google Classroom neat and organized is archiving and deleting classroom that you no longer teach. By the end of the school year, a lot of teachers approach me with the same question, how do we delete Google Classrooms that we don't no longer teach? We taught them last year, now we have another group of students and we don't need uh, Google Classrooms from last year. And you will be surprised that it's not a straightforward process and there's a reason behind that. Um, so, how do we delete a Google Classroom that we no longer need? Deleting a classroom, a Google Classroom, requires two steps. When you open your Google Classroom, make sure you go to Classes and you see our all classes. I want to delete my second Google Classroom. I taught the group of students uh, this year and I'm not going to teach them that next year and I want to delete this class. Now, if you click on three dots in the top right corner, you won't see delete um, option. And this is where people normally go to uh, edit or delete, but delete is no longer there. Because Google Classroom is set up in such a way is that before you delete, you need to archive it. Click archive. Google Classroom will warn you that students won't be able to access this class, but it will appear in archived classes. Now when it's been archived, we, need, we can finally delete it. Click on three lines in the top left corner and scroll all the way down to archived classes. You will see the class that has been archived, but now when you click on three dots, you will see an option to delete. And this is how you delete your class permanently. So you might be wondering, why is that I need to archive first and then delete it? And this is the answer. When the class is archived, there are two things you can do. First, you can always restore this class. If I click restore, it will be moved back and students will be able to access that. Another thing you can do with archive classes, you can reuse posts made in this class before. So let's imagine that I still teach my first Google Classroom and I want to reuse some posts that were made in my second Google Classroom and the second Google Classroom has been archived. I don't see it in my home screen, but I can still source or take some materials from there. Uh, if I go to classwork in my first Google Classroom, click create and click reuse posts, you will notice that in the selector of the classes, I can still see my second Google Classroom. Even though I don't see it on my home screen, where I normally see my classes, I can see it once I start reuse post, but it, it is marked that it has been archived. I can select my second Google Classroom and I can use some posts that are there. And that's the main difference between uh, deleting and archive. All right, so let's wrap it up. Today we've looked at how to keep our Google Classroom nice and organized. We've looked at how we can use topics to compartmentalize the posts that we've created. We looked at how we can reuse posts that were made previously. We also looked at how to archive classes, how to delete a class so it's no longer visible in either our home screen or in archived classes. In our next Google Classroom tutorial, we'll have a look at a brand new feature of Google Classroom rubrics. I'm super excited to introduce rubrics because I think it will simplify the grading process as well as the, the general workflow of Google Classroom. Don't miss it out and I'll see you next time.